Hello and welcome to the final roster overview for Gundam Versus. Now that I have completed a suit breakdown for every suit in this game, I wanted to take a second to look back on the roster, see the successes, see the failures, see things I could think could have done better, and things that I think were done very well. Uh, let us begin with First Gundam. I think First Gundam was done very well in this game. Uh, very nice kit, good mix of melee and ranged, very nice burst. Not too bad. A good, a good 400. The gun cannon was pretty solid. Uh, melee was very powerful, uh, though very short reach. Uh, the range is very nice. I think the gun cannon, pretty good for 300. Not as strong as the gun gum or the gun tank, but the gun cannon was not too bad at all. The gun tank is really good. Uh, crazy damage for a 200. Definitely should probably have been moved up to a 300, but I like it quite a bit, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. A lot of fun to play in this game. Jobenzaku is another one of those 200s that does a crazy high amount of damage. Uh, very, very fun. Not great on range, but the melee is very nice. And has a, a very unique moveset among the suits in this game, which is really cool. Shorzaku 2 is not bad at all. Uh, definitely could have been done a little better, I think. I think having a little bit more damage on its melee attacks might have made it stand out a little bit more. Among the other 200s, it doesn't really have a gimmick the way that they do. Even though it does have Shar's signature movement, a couple of other suits in this game do too. Uh, but I think it's it's relatively fine. Char's Gelgook is quite a bit of fun, including the Elmeth in for the burst is really nice. Having the shield and the ability to throw the saber to be able to get the, or the Naginata that is, to be able to get the stun is really nice. And I think it turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm fond of it. The Zeong is cool and weird in this game and I really like it. It's not a suit that I love playing a lot, but it's a suit that I think is very unique and in a game with as many suits as this has uniqueness is definitely something to remember the dom is really nice uh the ability to use the black tri stars is really really cool uh at a 200 cost it's not going to cost that much does really good damage for the level that it's at and all in all it's just a fun suit to play my baby the gyan is uh not as powerful as it could be it definitely feels like it's been nerfed a little bit from the full boost days but I think what it brings to the table in the form of melee and the, the few ranged options that it has are really nice. It has some very good dedicated stuns. Rumbaral's goof is not as good as a different goof that is in this game, uh, but it's still not too bad at all. Uh, it's pretty solid on damage, does a good job. I like it well enough. First Gundam, I think, was done fairly well. Uh, when it representation, I don't think there's really too much that we're missing. Uh, I would have liked to have had maybe one more suit, maybe like a mass production Gelgoog that had a different moveset, or Johnny Ridden's Gelgoog, or something like that. Maybe even like Anna Gato's Gelgoog as a playable suit. But at the same time, I think what we got for First Gundam is pretty good, and I'm, I'm relatively happy with it having now played all of them and spent some time with all of them. For Zeta, we have the Zeta Gundam itself. Very powerful. Maybe a little weak compared to a couple other 500s, but the ability to transform with the mobility that it has, very, very good. like it quite a bit. It wound up being pretty fun to play around with. The Hakushiki is okay in this game. I think that the melee is a lot of fun, and the Mega Particle Cannon is really fun to play around with, but other than that, it really doesn't have much going on. Uh, they could have played a little bit more around with the beam coating, I think, but... For the most part, I think it is still fun to play as. It is still pretty cool. It's just not very unique in this game, unfortunately. You have the Gundam Mark II. Super Gundam, as it's called, because it has the super backpack. It's fine. Again, it has some really cool moves to it, and it has a really good range game with a pretty decent melee game. But it just doesn't have as much as I would like it to have to really shine, especially among the rest of the Zeta suits. Where there's some really solid Zeta suits. The Nemo is a fine 200. It does a good job. It has a guaranteed stun. Uh, if you're going to play a 200, the Nemo is not the one I would recommend. But I enjoyed my time with it nonetheless. The Methus is a very interesting support suit that I wish played better. I wish that it was more fun to use. I wish that it did a little bit more damage where it could stand on its own in 1v1s. As it is on 1v1s, there's not really any purpose to use the Methus ever. I just, I think it could have been utilized quite a bit better in this game. Rick Dias is really fun. It has the weird glue gun and 
it has so many other options to it that you may not have expected. The Rick Dios is surprising 200 for sure. Gundam Mark II is a blast. Uh, being able to use the twin beam sabers, being able to throw them, the kicks that it has. Uh, the Titans Mark II is really fun to play around with. The O is the O, and it is a blast to play around with in this game. It has a lot of secret moves. It has a lot of cool grabs. It has very interesting pressure ability that allows it to stun enemies around it. The O is really solid and one of the best starters in this game, if not the best. Uh, one of the best strikers in this game, if not the best striker in this game. Uh, the O is quite a bit of fun, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out in this game. The Bound Dock is DLC, first off. Uh, but I think the Bound Dock is quite a bit of fun to play around with. It's really cool. I like it. The transformation's a little weird and gimmicky on it as compared to some of the other suits. But what you can do with the Bound Dock, and especially the grab move, is very unique compared to other suits in this game. But I think it's pretty good. The Masala is one of my favorite suits. It's in my list of the favorites. I love playing around with the Masala. Being able to do the spins that it has the Garobi that it has access to, the missiles, and it has decent melee as well, though it does have a short melee reach. I think the Masala is a blast to play around with them, and I'm really happy with how it turned out in this game. The Hyzak and the Marasai, I kind of had to loop in together here. The Hyzak and the Marasai are two really, really solid 200s that have multiple stun options, that have multiple ranged and melee options. They're both quite a bit of fun to play around with, and I definitely think you should check them out. The Gabflay is fine. It's serviceable. It has a decent range game. It has a decent melee game. I just didn't find myself enjoying it very much at all. I thought that playing it, although again fine, was just not, not great. There are other suits, uh, even in the Zeta area, that I think do the job quite a bit better. So Zeta as a series. Again, we got just about everything from Zeta that I wanted. There are a few grunt suits that might have been cool to have here, but for the most part, I think it turned out relatively well. I think they did a good job with the Zeta cast, and I'm not too upset about any of the decisions they made. The Methus, I think, is one of the worst suits in this game because it is almost worthless in a 1v1. I think the Gap Flag could have been better, and I think both the Hyakushiki and the Mark II, the Super Backpack, could have been better. But for the most part, I'm really satisfied with how the Zeta Gundam suits turned out. I think... They're pretty good. They're not too bad at all. For Double Zeta, we have the Faz, the full armor Double Zeta, which I find to be fine. It's very powerful, but one of its abilities is to shed its armor and just become the Double Zeta again. I hit the wrong button. And when it does so, it does not lose its cost. It's still a 500 cost. And so... I just don't have a lot of fun playing it. It's fine. The Garobis are powerful. It's got a good range game, but among 500s, there are other 500s I would prefer to play as. I think the base form Double Zeta is pretty good. Uh, it's still a little high cost for what I normally play as. I normally play as threes and twos, uh, but at a 400, it's not too bad at all. Power-wise, it's really powerful. It still has some really good attacks, and I like it well enough. I still don't think the moveset is as fun, as it is in full boost. And I think there are some small tweaks they could have done to make it play a little bit better. And the transformation is, is kind of rough on the double Zeta, but I think it's fine for the most part. The Cubelays are a mixed bag here because the funnels on one hand are really good and they do a really good job. But I think the melee sets on the Cubelays are pretty rough. And this game is very melee based. Um, there is very little of this game that you are not going to be going in for melee with. And very few suits that you would want to use that don't have good melee. And I think the Cubelays are on a weird part of that. Hamans has some better movements to it, but it still doesn't really put it in the same tier as some of the other suits. And I just don't think that they turned out very well. I think what you can do with the Cubelays and with the rushes that they both have are fine, but I just think compared to other suits in this game, they did not shine very well at all. For how Double Zeta as a series showed out, I think it showed out really poorly in this game. Um, the Double Zeta series has so many other suits, and part of that is because the Mark II and the Hyakushiki are already in the Zeta section, but there's no Bawu, 
uh, the Psycho Gundam is a boss, and you, I guess, couldn't play that, but the lack of a Bawu, the lack of a couple other grunt suits, it just, this could just be me, because I do love the Bawu, but the Zaku 3, the Dovin Wolf, there are so many other grunt suits that could have been put in here for the Double Zeta side that would have really given it some more options and seen more play, because as it is, even when I do get people together to play this game, you don't normally see people choosing Double Zeta suits. I just don't think they were done very well in this game. After that is Char's Counter-Attack. We get our favorite, the new Gundam. Uh, it's really solid in this game. I like it quite a bit. I think they did a really good job with it. Not perfect by all means, but what it can do is still really fun, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I cannot stand the Regazi in this game. Uh, the fact that the Regazi starts out in jet mode and you have to use an attack to shed the jet and then you cannot get it back. I understand why they went with that. It's very unique compared to other suits in this game. I just don't find it fun. So I do not think that I would recommend the Regazi at all. In fact, I find it to be a huge pace killer when you spawn back in and are ready to go after somebody only to realize that you now have to ditch the jet and leave yourself open while you were doing so. The Octoga, specifically Gune's Octoga, I think is really good. Uh, it still uses funnels, much like the Cubelays, but what it has to really make up for the Cubelays is a pretty decent melee game and a really good range game. The ability to fire off the... The ability to fire off from the shield as well, it, it's... Got some surprising moves that you may not see coming, and I think that makes it really good. The Sasabi is fine. I think that what it brings to the table is really cool. I just don't personally like playing it that much in this game. I think it was more fun in the previous games. I think part of that is to do with how slow the Sasabi feels in this game compared to uh, Full Boost. But it still has some fun options, and it's not bad at all. With that said, how does Shars Counterattack fare? I think that it's fine for the most part. There's not that many suits in Shars Counterattack, so not that big of a deal not to have that many suits playable here. It's a little weird to have Gune's Yagdoga and not have Quests, but at the same time, it's fine. Unicorn and the RXO Unicorn itself. I think the Unicorn is a lot of fun to play around with. I think it's got a really cool moveset in this game. Uh, the fact that the Beam Magnum still makes the, the classic sound effect from the show is really cool. Um, in T mode is really fun. I think that the unicorn itself is quite a bit of fun to play around with and they did a really good job with it The Delta Plus however, I'm not a huge fan of it It's burst may be the worst burst in this game In that you cannot aim while doing it. So even though you're locked on it, it does not matter at all um, I think that the the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay with the Delta Plus can be fine But I just don't enjoy it myself there are other 300s in the Unicorn set that I think are quite a bit better. Which brings us to the Jesta. The Jesta is quite a bit of fun. I love the way it plays in this game. I think that it has just about an answer to every situation for the most part. And I just really like it in this game. I think they did a really good job bringing the Jesta into the Versus series. The Rizal, however, like the Delta Plus, I do not enjoy that much. I think the Rizal just is not that much fun to play. For much the same reason as the Delta Plus. Its kit is interesting and it has a thin line Garobi, which is pretty cool. But it just doesn't really capitalize on it, in my opinion. And I just don't like playing it. The Sananju takes all of my complaints from the Sazabi and answers them. The Sazabi uh, felt a little slow. The Sananju does not. The Sazabi felt a little bit clunky in this game for me. The Sazabi, you know, was fine. But the Sananju does not have any of those problems. And I think the Sinanju is quite a bit of fun to play around with in this game. One of my preferred 500s, for sure. The Banshee's also really cool. I think the grapple that it has, the grab, is really nifty. And what you can do with it is really fun. Uh, it has quite a few interesting mix-ups because of that. And it just looks cool in this game, too. I think they did a really good job with the lighting engine when it comes to the unicorn units. The Kshatriya is also really cool in this game. Not perfect. It definitely has a few things that I think could have been done better. But what it is able to do, and the Garobi that it has, is such a wide Garobi that you can use it for quite a few different applications. To be able to shut down somebody else's Garobi, to be able to catch an opponent that may be just out of range, 
of a basic shot, but they're going to be hit by that Garobi anyway. And it's really quick and easy to pull off, too, which makes it quite a bit fun to play around with. Unicorn as a whole, I think they did pretty well with. I think the Delta Plus and the Rizel are huge missteps for me. But I love every other suit in the Unicorn lineup. There's not really any suit that I think could have been here playable other than maybe a Jagan. I think a Stark Jagan would have been really cool to have playable uh, because of that first episode of Unicorn. But I think for the most part, they did a really good job with this. And I'm pretty fond of it. For the F91 stuff, we have the F91 itself, which I think is really good in this game. Still feels really fast. Still is really cool to play around with. Has some good moves. Good at just about any range, except for the longest range. But still, the F91, I think, is, is a very good... Well done. The Vignagina is my favorite 200 in the entire game. The mobility that the Vignagina has, the damage that it's able to do, and just the, the movement options that it has are insane. And I absolutely adore it. If you have not watched the Vignagina Super Breakdown yet, you should go back and check it out because I think the Vignagina is really good. The Burger Gyros is okay. Uh, it has multiple stunts, which is good. It has some really good options to it, which is cool. I just don't think it stands up to a lot of the other 300s in this game. Uh, for the most part, it's fine. It's serviceable. If you like its design, go for it. You're not going to be upset that you did. Uh, but if you're kind of on the fence, maybe look at some of the other 300s. I think there are some other ones that do what the Burger Gyros is trying to do a little bit better. Although it's one of the few suits in this game that has a lance. And so it does have a pretty interesting forward melee because of that. For how they did with F91, I mean, they did about as good as they could. There aren't any other suits in F91, really. So I think they did a pretty good job with all three of these. For victory, I cannot stand playing as the V2. It has so many options. And normally that's a thing that I love. But I think the V2 has... Maybe too many forms is the way to put it, because two of the forms, the cannon and I think it's called Blast, are very similar forms. They don't change too much, but you do still have that moment's hesitation as you switch between them. And what that leads to is, if you are not careful, you will attempt to do a Garobi, and instead you will transition into a different form and be open, I guess is the best way to put it. You will be hanging in midair getting ready to be attacked. If you play with a V2 enough, obviously you don't have that problem. Muscle memory kicks in and you will not make that mistake. I just don't find it enjoyable to play as either. I think at a 500, it doesn't do as much damage as I would like it to do. It does have options. So if you really like the design of the V2 or you just want a 500 that has a billion options, go for it. It will not disappoint you there. I just don't enjoy playing it myself. The Gun EZs, a lot of fun to play around with. I think of the 200s, it's one of the weaker ones, but it still has some really cool combos. Um, the permanent strikers are really cool, and the ability to use the full strength of the strike team is really cool. Uh, it's fine. It's completely serviceable. I hate Katagina Loose, and I also hate the Gotlerand. Those are two completely disconnected things, and I promise you that. I think the Gotlerand is fine for the most part. I just really dislike its design. I really dislike a lot of its melee combos. Uh, the Garobi that it has is pretty good, but it just doesn't really shine for me among other suits that have them. I would take 200 or 300s that have Garobis over the Gotleran every day. How did they do with, v with Victory as a series? Um, it's fine. There's again, there's not that many suits that would really work in a versus style game. You wouldn't bring like a Man Rody and expect it to be, you know, really good. I think not having the basic victory is a little weird, but for the most part, I think they did fine with the victory suits. I just really don't like playing as two of them, and the one that I do like playing as is pretty weak. G Gundam is all DLC, which is a big mark against it, but I do think they're pretty fun uh, DLC suits. They're both very, fun, very much focused on melee, and I think what they're able to accomplish with the Burning and the Master are both really good. I think the Burning is a blast to play with. It's really fun. But they're $5 a piece. So that is definitely something to think about. $5 a piece is not cheap for two G Gundam suits. And the only G Gundam suits. Um, the Burning itself, again, is really cool. The charge levels that it has is really fun. And I really like playing as it. The Master I don't play as much. But it has... One of the craziest moves in the game where you spawn the smaller Master Gundams and they fly out and can stun. So it always has a guaranteed stun. It's pretty crazy. 
Uh, maybe a little too powerful in some places, but they're pretty easy to destroy once you know how they work. The Master Gundam is, is pretty good. Again, at both at 500 cost. Not normally a cost that I play with, but I like them both fairly well. How did they do with G Gundam? Terribly, because none of them are in the base game on their own. And even then, you still only have the Burning and the Master. There's no Maxter. There's no Rose. There's no, uh, anything, basically. There's the Dragon Gundam's not here. The Spiegel Gundam's not here. The Bolt Gundam's not here. There's so many other good G Gundam suits that just were not brought over at all. Uh, and that's a huge disappointment for a lot of people. And especially that the two that did make it in wound up being DLC. That's, that's not a win in my book. For Wing, we have the Wing Zero, which is very good in this game. It has some very, very powerful ranged maneuvers. Um, what it can do at range is really good. What it can do at melee is decent. And so among the 500s, it's pretty balanced. I think it, it was done fairly well. The Death Scythe has some really good melee combos. It's crazy how good those melee combos are. And I think they did a really good job with it. Its range game isn't as good, but hey, what's that matter when it has melee like it does? Heavy Arms is a lot of fun to play around with in this game as well. Having very little good melee attacks, but what it has are, are decent, you know. Um, the ranged options are really good, again, with the Heavy Arms. And I think they did a pretty solid job with it. I wish it had maybe one more good range combo, just to really give you an option for when people close in on you. But Sidestep Gatling is never a bad thing. The Sand Rock is pretty good in this game. It has a really nice charge move that has hyper armor on it and allows you to get in really good. Uh, but it is pretty short range, so you need to you need to really test out that distance and be aware of what your range is. I think that the Sand Rock's pretty fun, and at a 300 cost, it doesn't have to be anything too spectacular. I think it does a really good job of what it's got. For the Altron gun. <coughs> 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 For the Altron Gundam, the Altron is fine. What it has to bring to the table is fine. I would not say anything better than fine, however, because I do think the Altron has a lot of problems at range, and I think that its melee combos aren't as... They don't combo as much as I would like them to. They're pretty basic. I think the Altron itself is fine, and you can definitely bring out some good stuff with it. I just don't like it very much playing it myself. The Epion is really, 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 really good at melee. It has almost nothing at range, but it has a combo that if you perform it correctly, you won't drop it. If you're in a 1v1, you will do insane amounts of damage to the enemy uh, if you can pull that combo off right. Now, you have to be able to pull it off, and they have to not, be, or they have to be hit by it. Uh, which means if you're playing against somebody that knows what you're trying to do, they can punish you for it. But the Epion can be a lot of fun to play as, and not a lot of fun to play against in the hands of the right person. Toggies 2 is really good in this game. Uh, what it brings to the table is really solid. It has some decent melee, decent ranged, uh, very good mobility. It all ties in together to become a very decent suit. Then you have the Toggies 1. It lacks a little bit in the melee department compared to the Toggies 2, but the range department is just as good. Mobility is even better, I think. And... Being just a 300 cost, I think the Toggies, the basic Toggies is really good in this game. How did Wing do as a total? There's not really any other suits you would have added. Maybe add a Taurus, just for the fun of it. The Vate, the Mercurius would have been a lot of fun to play around with. But for the most part, I think they did a really good job with the Wing set. Uh, the only one that I don't really like is the Altron, and all the rest are fun or serviceable. So I think they did a really good job with the Wing set. Turn A! The Turn A Gundam itself is a lot of fun to play in this game. It has a lot of moves. It has a lot of hidden moves. And the damage that it does is real. The Moonlight Butterfly is not playing around. Uh, it is a 500 cost, so you do have to be aware of that. But it's really good. I like it quite a bit. The Kapool. Sophie's Kapool. Sochi's Kapool, specifically. It's fine. It's not amazing, but it does have some cool surprises to it. And it can do some decent damage. Um, Corrin's Kapool, however, is great. It has a ton of crazy moves. It has a Kapool stun where it can throw another Kapool to grapple onto you. Corrin's Kapool is amazing. And definitely, if you have not tried it out yet, you should. The Turn X is also really good. 
the ability that it has to split and attack from multiple directions, so many people seem to forget it has that at all. Turn X is really good, and it also has an erupting burning finger. So why not? The gold sumo and the silver sumo are also really good. The movement abilities they have between not just their spin and not just their eye field, but also their basic shots allowing them to move around, it's really good. And the IF bunkers are really powerful as well with a, a great stun that comes from them. Uh, the gold sumo striker has that stun as well, making it one of the best strikers in the game. I think that both of these units are really good. Pose Silver Sumo has a couple other options that the Gold Sumo does not have, but Harry's Gold Sumo does more damage. So definitely something to keep in mind as you try to choose between the two of them. Turn A as a whole, I think, was pretty good. There was no real need to add the Borjanan as a playable suit because we already have Uzaku's. Uh, from there, there's not really anything else you would want to play as. Maybe a flat, I suppose. But... I think they did a pretty good job with turn A. I think almost all the suits are a blast to play. On to seed, we have the Freedom. And the Freedom is really good at range, really decent at melee. All told, the Freedom is just a really decent suit. The Perfect Strike, which is a DLC suit. So remember that you will have to pay for that one. Uh, the Perfect Strike is fine. I think it does a pretty good job. Being able to have all of the Strikes backpacks available to it makes it pretty good. Uh, I do think in the melee category, it does miss out a little bit. It's back melee. Uh, being in that draw-in is really good, but the other melee combos just aren't really that great. However, it is one of the few suits in the game that has a uh, hook to be able to draw in enemies. So that is something to consider. Uh, it does have a Garobi as well. So I guess having all of that at its, at its feet and being able to use it any time is pretty solid. The basic strike is really fun as well. Being able to switch between the packs is really cool. And I think they did a really good job with the basic strike in this game. The Providence has a lot of power, but does not feel very fast. It feels really heavy, which I guess it should, but it just doesn't feel very good to play, in my opinion. I think the Providence, although it has a lot of power at range, its melee game is lacking quite a bit. And the Funnels really should be its bread and butter, and the Funnel reload time is not short for the Providence. The Forbidden is a ton of fun to play around with in this game with a directable Groby, uh, the melee combos for that scythe. I'm really bad at the Forbidden, but I really like the Forbidden in this game. It's very unique compared to the other suits. The Raider's pretty cool. It's too bad it's also DLC. Um, what the Raider brings to the table is some really, really cool melee combos, a decent ranged game, and some really cool mobility. I think the Raider's a lot of fun to play around with. But it is $5. Then you have the Dual Gundam, the Assault Shroud version. You can shed the Assault Shroud. You can shed the Assault Shroud to be able to get in with some melee attacks as well, though. Uh, the Duel's really good in this game. I think they did a really good job with its range and its melee game. Really solid. I like it quite a bit. The Buster is so much fun to play around with that it's such a shame that it's DLC. $5 for the Buster I think is definitely worth it, but... The Buster has no melee. It makes it such a weird and cool suit in this game where there's no melee option at all. And so your melee button allows you to switch between main shot options. I love playing as the Buster in this game. And being able to pull out some crazy moves with the various different weapon types that it has is really cool. The Blitz is pretty fun in this game. I think that the, the movement that it has is really cool. Being able to throw off targeting like the... the Death Scythe can is really cool. I think the Blitz is just pretty good. It's not a bad suit. It's not a great suit. I think it's fine. The Aegis is also really fun to play as in this game, which again makes it a huge shame that it's DLC. I think the fact that the Aegis has this, this crazy grab move that you can use four different combos out of, and one of those being a self-destruct, is really cool. And I think they did a really good job with it. Again, I just wish it was in the main game. So how did Seed do as a franchise? Well, it included most of its suits, which is good. Uh, the biggest complaint that I would have is that although, yes, it included most of its suits, it did so by using a lot of DLC. With three different suits being DLC, that's a huge bummer. I understand that sometimes your suits just aren't done in time, but that is a huge bummer to have three of the suits dedicated to DLC, especially when two of them are part of the 5G units. 
From there, there are a couple of suits that are missing. There's no playable Baku, uh, which is a huge shame. Uh, something like the Gaia would have solved that problem. Um, there's no grunt suit playable at all. No Gins or anything like that. No Astrays. Uh, and again, now that we bring it up, there are no Astrays in this game. And this is where they would have been. Uh, the red frame, the green frame, the blue frame, the gold frame, the no name. It's just a shame that none of them made it into this game. Uh, that's pretty crazy to me that not a single Astray is in this game. So I think, all told, I actually think Seed did a pretty bad job representing its franchise. Uh, with so many suits being DLC, the ones that were already here were really good for the most part, other than like the Providence. But it's just a shame that there's so many missing and there's so many DLC. Double O is going to have a couple problems with that as well, but we'll we'll break it down as we go through. The Exia is a lot of fun to play with. It's the only suit in this game that has the ability to resurrect, basically, with 100 cost if you are the last suit taken out and your team is about to lose. It has really good melee with some decent range. It's not bad at all. The Dynamis is the opposite of that with really good range with some decent melee. I think the Dynamis is a lot of fun to play as in this game. They did a very good job with it. The Kyrios is really cool. Again, it's one of my favorite suits. And the Kyrios has amazing grab attack. It has some really good mobility. I think they did a very good job with these three of the units. The Virtue is a problem. It's also DLC. The Virtue has multiple Garobis and uh, a second form. It's very powerful. It should not be a 300. If it was a 500, it would be balanced very well. But the Garobi is a little too good on the Virtue. Again, if you know a Virtue's on the enemy team, you're just going to target it, take it out, stun it until it dies. But the Garobi's a little too good on the Virtue. And with it being DLC, that only makes it more obvious. Um, however, the uh, Virtue is still a lot of fun to play. Even if you don't use the Garobi, the Virtue has quite a few other options. It's just a shame that it kind of has a stigma among Gundam Versus players as a cheap suit because of that. The Throne Eins is pretty good. I like it. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Uh, the cannon that it has is really cool. Being able to call in this the Throne Zvi as a battery, or the Zvi as a battery is really cool. And I like it quite a bit. The Zvi is a ton of fun to play with as well. The sword that it has, the Buster is really good. Uh, the Fangs are really fun to mess around with. I think it's got some really good melee combos. And you can unlock uh, Ali Al-Sacha as a second pilot, which is really cool. Throne Dry is a little bit weird. Unlike the Methus, it does still have options to be able to support itself. And it does still have the ability to fight 1v1s, really. It does quite a bit of damage still. But it is a support suit, and one of its moves is dedicated to making it where your opponents cannot lock on to your teammates. But your opponents can still lock on to you. Which makes you a sitting duck while you're doing it. And something that you definitely need to be aware of if you decide you want to play as the Dry. The Union Flag Custom, specifically Graham's Flag, is a lot of fun to play with. It's very fragile, is maybe the right word. It does not have a lot of health, but it does quite a bit of damage and has a ton of mobility. It's a blast to play around with. Uh, Soma's Tierra and Tamsi is pretty good. It is a really weird 200 in a lot of ways, but it has some really fun combos, and I like it quite a bit. The GNX has some great melee combos. It's really good. And it's very surprising how much damage it can do in melee for a 200. I like it quite a bit. The Alvaron is the other DLC suit. It's very unique in that it has a second shift that it can take after a certain amount of time has passed, where it can turn into mobile armor mode. And as the Alvator, you can actually do quite a bit of damage. Uh, eventually, you will either, of course, be killed by your opponents, or if you're good enough, not, and be able to access that form. However, it is DLC. I think it's a lot of fun to play around with. It has some really cool moves, but it's another $5. Double O as a series, I think they did fairly well. Uh, not really any grunts that I would have wanted here too much. There are a couple suits that might have been cool to have. Um, specifically, there are no Season 2 suits here, which is a little weird. I like the Season 1 suits more than I like the Season 2 suits, so that's not a huge disappointment. But there are some Season 2 suits, like the Susanoo, that might have been really fun to have playable. Uh, and then again, having two suits, including, again, one of the main four suits, 
being DLC is a problem in my opinion. So I do think they did a pretty pretty mediocre showing of the double O team. Getting into the age set. All of these are DLC. The age one normal is such a blast to play as, and it's shame to me that so many people think that all it has to bring to the table is the Spallow. Because the Titus and the Flat are both really good. And being able to use Flat is not correct. It's still just the normal. Flat would be the way that it would show up later on, and that is not in this game. Let me clarify that before the comments come in. Where it winds up landing with all the options that it has, I think it's really good. It does still have the problem of the V2, where if you transform to the wrong one, or if you just hit the button without putting in the right input, you will have lag in midair and will be caught unawares um, because your opponents will have a free shot on you. But I think that what it can do and the way that you can cancel the burst partway through to be able to switch into one of those forms right away is really cool. I think that the age one is very powerful. Probably should be a 400 and not a 300, but it's my favorite suit to play as in this game and I really like it. Age 2 is also really good. It only has the one transformation into the double bullet. Um, but it's pretty solid. It has some really good movement and really good range game. Melee's not bad at all. I like it quite a bit. The Farsi is weird in this game. Uh, it has a permanent striker that seems to move almost on its own. Which would make sense for the character. But also does not help you very much when playing the game. Uh, because there were multiple times where uh, Destiny just did not want to follow inputs it felt like. Um, the Farsia is weird. I like it, but I also don't like it. And it's definitely one of the DLC suits that I think you should not spend your money on. The Zaydra is fine. It's completely serviceable. It has some really cool melee combos. has some decent melee uh, range game, including a decent Garobi. But, again, for all four of these suits, they're DLC. $5 a piece, so $20 if you want to get every age suit. Which is a problem. And so when we ask the question, how did age fare? How did they show age in this game? Age is really bad because first off, none of them are in the base game. And second off, there's a lot of suits that just aren't here. The age three is not here. Uh, there are no Genoises to be had playable. There are so many suits that just did not make the cut. And it just is a little weird to me that age is, is barely here. And the four that are here are all DLC. So I think Age had a pretty bad showing in this game, even though I really like the way that three of these suits play. For Reconquista in G, we start off with the G-Self Perfect Pack, which is also DLC. $5. Uh, the Perfect Pack is a lot of fun to play as, I won't lie to you. It has some really, really cool combos, and it's very powerful. It doesn't have as much health as I would like, but what it is able to do on the field is really good. For the basic G-Self, it can access a lot of the things... That the perfect pack has and it's not dlc so that's good uh what it brings to the table is pretty good definitely serviceable nothing terrible um it's it's fine melee game i was gonna say it's melee is not that great but it's melee is fine the gr kane's melee is not fine the gr kane's melee is kind of bad but the range game is pretty good as you would expect from a sniper suit i think that the gr kane is is fine i just don't like playing as it very much myself the Mac Knife does bring a really cool melee game and a pretty decent melee, uh, range game as well. Mac Knife's not too bad at all. I like it well enough. So we ask, how did G Reco show in this game? Having the perfect pack be DLC is really unfortunate. Um, there are also a lot of suits that just didn't make it in at all. The Jehannum's not here. Uh, none of the Grunt suits are really, none of the Grimoires or anything like that. And so it's just kind of weird to have G-Reco was pretty recent when this game was first announced, and there's not much here. On to Iron-Blooded Orphans with the Barbados Lupus, not the Rex, uh, just the basic Barbados Lupus, which is also DLC. I think that the Barbados Lupus is a ton of fun to play with in this game. Uh, the sword combo is really good. It's just a blast to play with in melee, and its range is not terrible either. It's really powerful. It's just a shame that it's five dollars uh the barbados the basic barbados is really fun to play with as well it has one of the best melee games in this entire game and i think that its range game is not great but it's also not terrible either so i think it's definitely worth playing around with the goosey and rebake has one of again the best melees in this entire game it's crazy how good the melee in the ibo suits are but this one is also dlc um 
it has a combo that is close to the Epion in terms of number of hits that you can pull off. Uh, it's just a shame that, again, it's DLC. The Kamaris Trooper is pretty good. It has some really good movement options, has a decent range game, and again, has a pretty solid melee game. So how did Iron-Blooded Orphans show out? It's just Season 1 stuff, but even in Season 1, there's some stuff missing. There's no playable Grace. Uh, the Grace Iron is not here. And then having these two as DLC is just a shame. I would have liked to see quite a few more suits from IBO in here. And would have been really cool if the Goosean, at least the Goosean, was not DLC. To start us memory, we have no DLC suits here, which is really cool. Uh, we start off with the GP01. GP01 is perfectly for, uh, serviceable. It's fine. It does a good job. The full Vernian, the full Burnern is super fine. The GP02 is very powerful. Has the nuke. Quite a bit of fun to play with. Uh, even if it does feel a little slow, I think it more than makes up for it in terms of power. GP03, the Stamen, is really fun to play around with with some crazy moves. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it has about as much health as the GP01 and is a 400 cost. Feels a little weird, but I like it. I like it quite a bit. The GM Custom, piloted by South Burning, is another one of those 200s that should not be as good as it is. It's really solid. It has a great charge with Hyper Armor on it. It allows you to do quite a bit of damage. It's really fun to mess around with. The GM Cannon 2 is one of those suits that has multiple charge tiers, multiple levels, which makes it kind of unfortunate for me because I find that I always want to charge to the full charge, which you really should not do with the GM Cannon 2. You should be using your charges as you need them and not charging all the way every chance you get. How did Stardust Memory come out? I think it came out really good. Not having Gato's Galgoog makes sense because it doesn't show up in Stardust Memory, and so I think for the most part it's fine. Oh wait, the mess team! The Easy 8 is here. The Easy 8 is fun. The Easy 8's really good. The ground type is here. The ground type's fun. It's It does everything you need the ground type to do. The Goof Custom has incredible mobility. They definitely did it justice. How does the 8th MS team come out? Comes out just fine. All the suits are in the game at launch. You do not need to buy any of them as DLC. And all of your favorite suits are here. On to Thunderbolt. We have the Thunderbolt itself. The full armor Gundam. Uh, TB version. It's perfectly fine. I think the charge is really cool. It has a really fun main, uh, range game. And its melee game is decent. I think it does a, a pretty good job. The Atlas is DLC. Another $5. Um, the Atlas has some really cool mobility options. Uh, and where the full armor has a really good charge forward, the Atlas has a really good charge sideways. I think for the most part, the Atlas is fine. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme on the Atlas, so I feel like that colors my perception of it a little bit. But I think for the most part, it's fine. The Psycho Gundam has some great range capabilities in this game. It's really cool what it's able to do. Really happy with how they, they pulled that off. Even if the melee's not that great, I think the range more than makes up for it with the Psycho Gundam. How did Thunderbolt do? Did pretty good. There aren't really any other suits that you would want to put in there, so good job. Side Story has just one suit, uh, the Sniper 2 White Dingo version. It is DLC. Uh, it's fine. It has a thin line Garobi, which is not too bad at all. Uh, pretty good range game. Not so great melee game. I think it's perfectly serviceable. $5 is a little much for a suit that I think is perfectly serviceable. But if you're a fan of the White Dingo, then you may want to purchase it anyway. Uh, how did Side Story do? I've never played Side Story. I've only seen footage of it, so I guess they did fine. Zionic Front brings us Garrett Zaku 1. Garrett Schmitzer's Zaku 1. And this suit, although DLC, is amazing. It's such a blast to play in this game. Has so many cool options and things that it can do. Has a great charge with hyper armor on it. This suit's really good in this game. And I really like it. The Mudrock is also here. And the Mudrock is pretty solid. I don't like it as much as I like the Zaku 1, but the Mudrock is still really good. Also still DLC, unfortunately. So how does Zionic Front show? They really give us everything that hasn't already been seen in Zionic Front, I suppose. But again, it's all DLC. Would have been really cool if these suits had been built into the game. On the Missing Link, we have the Slave Wraith. Slave Wraith is a lot of fun to play around with. They did a really good job with it, I think. Uh, still DLC. Fred's Pixie is really fun in this game. I think the melee combos the Pixie has in this game are really good. Still DLC. Vince's Gelgoog is really solid in this game. I think they did a pretty good job with it, even though it feels a little bit slow for a high mobility type. Still DLC. 
Schneid's Afrit is amazing and has some really, really fun melee combos. Build DLC. Then you have the Pale Rider, which is crazy with how good it is. It has so many different options, so many different ways to handle just about every situation. Still DLC. What this leads to is a spread of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight suits in a row that are all DLC, $5 a piece. That's $40 right there. Uh, but these are all suits that, for the most part, it seems the community was really happy to have in the game. And they did come quite a bit later, so that is something to keep in mind, but they are still $5 a piece. How did Missing Link do? Never played Missing Link personally, but it looks to me like they did a pretty good job. Just a shame they're all DLC. Crossbone brings us the Crossbone X1 Kai. Uh, the Crossbones are really good units in this game. Uh, the beam cloth is really handy for dealing with Garobis and things like that. And I think they did a pretty good job with all of them. Uh, the X2 Kai has uh, a couple more stuns to it and is a little bit more fun to play than the X1 Kai, I think. Uh, but the X3 has even more options to it and I find less fun to play, if that makes sense. But I think they did a pretty good job with all three of them. And again, there's not really any suits that you would want to have uh, that aren't already in the game. So I think that for the most part, it's totally fine. Then you have the full armor, or the full cloth, that is, uh, from Crossbone as well. Uh, not DLC, which is cool. And I think it's great. What it brings to the table is really good. It has a lot of really good options, uh, but it is a 500 cost, so it, it automatically is something I don't normally play that much. But I think they did a pretty good job with it. And just like with the rest of Crossbone, not really any other suits that you'd want to have, so I think they did a good job. Uh, the Phantom. The Phantom is super weird. I really don't like playing as the Phantom uh, from Ghost, from Crossbone Ghost. The Phantom, like, it it has some cool things to it, and the mode change is really cool. It also has a really weird striker in that it has an eye field generator, and it blocks Gorobis for you, which is really cool. Uh, but it is also DLC, and another DLC that I don't really recommend them. We also have the High New Gundam, not DLC, comes built in with the game. High New is really fun to play around with. There's quite a bit of damage. Again, I don't like the color scheme as much as I like the basic New Gundam, but I think they did a pretty good job with it. The Nightingale is DLC, but the Nightingale is also really fun to play as, so take that as you will. Uh, I think the Nightingale has a lot of cool options, and what it brings to the table is really interesting. It also has is probably the biggest suit that's playable, other than the Big Zam in Trial Mode, and it has some really cool movement because of that. I like it quite a bit. The Build Strike is DLC. Uh, it is pretty fun. I like it. It has some really interesting mix-ups. Uh, even though, melee-wise, it's not quite as good as I was hoping it would be, I think it brings quite a bit to the table, and it has a really unique attack in the form of being able to launch its backpack off, and it attacking on its own which is really interesting and then finally the hot scramble uh also from build fighters also dlc was way too op when the game launched and had to be nerfed but now is in a pretty good spot still really powerful but is also a 500 and i think it i think it's quite a bit of fun to play as i like the hot scramble from build fighters though there's a lot of suits that could have been included in this and not having the finiche the Crossbone Maul, uh, the X Maul, not having a ton, like the Zaku Amazing, not having a ton of suits is such a shame from Build Fighters. And all of them that are from Build Fighters being DLC is also a shame. Overall, how do I feel about this roster? I think this roster is good. I don't think this roster is great. There's a lot of missed opportunities in this roster, in my opinion. A lot of suits that should have been in and just aren't uh, a lot of suits that did make it in as DLC. And as much as I understand that DLC has to come after the game, and most of the DLC did come many, many, many months after the game came out, it's still such a shame to me to have so many great suits relegated to DLC when they really didn't have to be. These suits, there are so many suits that were in previous games that should have been in this game and just aren't. And so many suits that were in previous games that should have been this game and arrived as DLC. There are some cool new inclusions, such as the Hot Scramble, the Build Strike, suits that have never been in a Versus game before. But at the same time, it just feels like they, they should have done more. Um, when I first talked about this roster, I was pretty positive on it. 
um, having now played with every suit in this game, the lack and spent real time to review every suit in this game, the lack of a stray is really obvious. Uh, the lack of season two for double O and IBO is really obvious. And even if there's a reason that they can't have a season two for IBO, there's not for double O. The lack of G Reco suits is really obvious, and the lack of age suits is crazy obvious to me. Not even to mention G. There's just so many series. X is still not in at all. There was never any DLC for X to bring X into this game. There's just so many suits that should have been in here that aren't. That I think, having now reviewed every suit, I can I can positively say the roster in this game is lacking. And there are a lot of really fun suits to play in this game. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in this game. But I do believe the roster is lacking. We've got a couple more videos coming out for Gundam Versus over the next couple days. Or next couple weeks. Uh, I want to do a spotlight on some of my favorite strikers. And I want to do a spotlight on some of my favorite suits. And I want to just do a general overall of the game itself. Uh, at some point I want to I want to come back and have leveled every suit to 20 and then talk about that process and how tedious it's going to be. Uh, but with all that said for now, let me know your thoughts on the full roster um, and on my thoughts of the full roster of Gundam Versus. I have been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. And remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum. Gundam Versus has to offer.